Welcome to an introduction to QTL analysis software part one. Join map version 4.1. Through this tutorial, you will learn the basic functions of join map, a computer program used to calculate genetic linkage maps for diploid species in experimental population. The first step is to open the program. In the main interface, there are four main areas. First is the menu and toolbar located at the top of the window. On the left vertical pane, there is a navigation panel. And to the right is the main contents and results window with tab sheets along the top. The status bar is shown along the bottom and this provides more information about the results of the actions performed in the software. Once the program is open, create a new project by selecting File, Create New Project in the toolbar. You will be prompted to create a name for your new project. We have selected Tutorial as our file name. Save the project in the My Documents join map directory. Create a new dataset by selecting Dataset, Create New Dataset in the toolbar. You can now load your data into the program. We will be using simulated marker data from an F5 recombinant inbred line or real population consisting of 200 individuals and 62 single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNP markers. Open your market data in Excel and ensure it is in the proper format for your specific population type. More information on formatting can be found in the manual. For our purposes, we are using the appropriate format for rows. This will create a dataset node in the navigation tree, and you should see a 2x2 two two matrix in the results window. Now, you must define the data sheet, which is located at the bottom of the results window. First, name the sheet. We have chosen tutorial as our population name. And now enter the population type, RIL, which is indicated by RLX. And we will specify X or number of generations equal to five. Enter the number of loci or markers, which we will enter 62 for our SNP markers. Enter the number of individuals in your population. And for our data, this is 200. In the results window, you should notice the matrix has changed to be large enough to incorporate the data set. If the axes of your data are switched compared to the matrix, this can be easily remedied by using the transpose option under the edit menu. Now copy the SNP marker data from the Excel file and go back to the matrix and select the upper left cell and paste the data. Use the Reset tab sheet function under the Edit menu to be able to visualize your data better. Make sure all your data is complete and in the correct columns. Apply the Highlights Error function from the Dataset menu in the toolbar, which will highlight any errors in red. The errors are reported on the status bar. As you can see, the program has found an error in the SNP coding for row 16, column 13. To fix the error, click on the cell and press F2. Change the genotype from BB to B. Once again, select Highlight Errors and check the status bar reads No Coding Errors Detected. Next, a population node is created by selecting Create Population Node under the Dataset menu. Several different tab sheets appear at the top of the results window. The data tab sheet is a non-editable copy of the genotype observation. The info tab sheet gives a summary of the loaded data. Click on individual genotype frequency tab and click on the calculator symbol in the toolbar to calculate the values. Missing genotypes are identified using the negative symbol. If identical genotypes are found, select the individuals using the control key. Under the population menu, click exclude selected items and recalculate. The individuals will now be removed. Make sure to recalculate all your previous tabs to ensure the individual has been removed from all data sheets. Select the similarity of individuals tab and calculate the values using the calculator button. In our data, we have two identical individuals. We will remove one individual, number 184, using the method previously mentioned. The same method can be used for similarity of loci, though no members need to be removed in this analysis. 
Now select the Locust Genotype Frequency tab and calculate the values using the calculator button. The expected frequency tested by the chi-square test can be changed by selecting all the rows and under the population menu, selecting the chi-square test classification for selected loci and select the one-to-one -one option. From this, marker segregation distortion is tested using a chi-square test. Here, some markers have some segregation distortion, though this is expected in a mapping population. Select the I symbol in the toolbar to get a summary of the information used to calculate the values in this tab sheet. Now we will create the linkage groups. The grouping tab sheets are just two different ways of visualizing the data analysis. There are four different methods to determine linkage groups. The independence test LOD score, linkage LOD score, an independence test p-value, and recombination frequency. Other parameter options can be selected by opening the calculation options button, shown by the yellow square icon with gears in the toolbar. We will use the default parameter, independence test log score, with default significance levels from 2.0 to 10.0, with steps of 1.0 log. Loci which are significantly associated with each other at particular thresholds will form one group. Under the grouping trees tab, arrow keys can be used to navigate the tree. Each node shows LOD values corresponding to when divergence took place, followed by the linkage group number, and then the number of individual loci within the brackets. This simulated data has two linkage groups based on a threshold of LOD 2.0. Another method to calculate the linkage groups is the recombination frequency option. To select this parameter, select the calculation options button in the toolbar. In the dialog box, select the population tab and set the parameter to use as recombination frequency. The same two groups can be identified now based on a recombination frequency of 0 0.250. This is a default starting value which can be changed in the threshold range option. Scroll between the different groups using the arrow keys and select two different linkage groups using the spacebar. They should become highlighted in red. Now under the Population tab, select Create Groups using the Groupings Tree function. The table generated while selecting the, the different grouping nodes will provide information with regards to the generation of the groups. Click on the Grouping tab. Strongest cross-link or SCL information is generated and can be used to determine if a loci was assigned to the proper group. If ungrouped loci are detected, further analysis of SCL values and groupings can be conducted to map ungrouped loci to previously established groups. All excluded loci are shown with an SEL value of 0.0. .0. Click on each group and calculate the suspect linkages under the Suspect Linkage tab. As you can see, no suspect linkages were found, and therefore no loci were excluded in this demonstration. Now we shall proceed in creating a map. Select a group node in the navigation panel. Use the calculator button to fill in the tab sheets. Select Calculation Options and under the Regression Mapping tab, select the mapping function COSAMBI. This provides a truer estimate of the distances between the markers as it takes into consideration crossover interference, and then click OK. Next, generate the map using the Calculate Map option. Once all the maps have been calculated, you can use the Combine Map function under the Join menu to show the results in the same file. The complete linkage map has now been created. Population information can be exported as a .loc extension file and the linkage map as a .map file for use in MapQTL for QTL analysis. Please note, this cannot be done in the evaluation version. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed our joint map tutorial. Please check out our follow-up video on QTL analysis using MapQTL 6.